Here's an example of some non-portable code. I have a unit test that loads a file and prints its contents to the console. It seems to work okay, except that I'm giving an absolute path to the file, and so if I sent you a copy of this code, you wouldn't be able to use it unless you recreated that directory structure on your own machine, and that's just sloppy. So instead, I'm going to configure this so that demo.txt is included within my Eclipse project. Then, when I export it to a zip or a jar file, uh, it'll be sent right along with the rest of the code. So in my package explorer, I right-click and choose to add a new source folder. The name here is a little deceiving. I'm not actually going to put any Java source files in this folder. Rather, the folder is going to be included on Eclipse build path. I'll call it assets. And with a little copy and paste, I now have demo.txt within my assets folder. This is a copy that's unrelated to the original. I could edit this to my heart's content, but in fact, I'm pretty content, so I'll leave that the way it is. Now, I need to change the way that this is accessed, so I'll get rid of my reference to a file input stream. And instead, I'm going to use what I call the class loader trick. It looks like this. It's worth taking some time to look up the API documentation on all these different pieces, but I'll give you a quick walkthrough. Thread.currentThread gives us the current thread of execution. Get context class loader loads the class loader from that thread. Get resources stream looks at this class loader and tries to find a resource with the given name. If it finds it, it returns it as an input stream. If it doesn't find it, it returns null. Once we have that input stream, I can cast it into a buffered reader using the decorator design pattern as usual. So let's do Control Shift O to organize imports to get rid of those compiler warnings. Control S to save the file and try running this again. Seems to work.